I've got another mailbag. I've got a few items. Well, let's start with this one. Because we've got to start somewhere, right? Uh, yeah. Hmm. I might actually need to use a real knife on this one. I think I know what's in here by the sound of it. They sound like crystals. And yep, they are. Oh, one more. Done the waste one, these are expensive. Stuck in the tape on the inside. Oh, come on, come out. Here we go. So what do we have? Some 13.3258 megahertz. I think that basically all of these are the same, but I did have a request for um, some other ones as well. And he said he had some, he's going to include them. There we go, 11.1125. 3258. I think it's all 3258 because it's a brand new, brand new unused, new old stock thing. And he happened to have one of these around and he said he'd chuck it in. So that's good. So these are obviously for CB radio modifications for doing conversions between frequencies. Now in New Zealand we use 635 kilohertz below the US CB band, 26 megahertz versus 27 megahertz. Sometimes you need crystals to swap between the two, like the US band is also legal in New Zealand, so it's actually got two bands we can use. And sometimes people want the 26 megahertz, sometimes people want the 27 megahertz, and so you have to change crystals around. And so I actually used the last crystal I had the other day. So these are perfect because they just arrived and now I've got a stock to last me quite a while, hopefully. Um, CB is pretty quiet these days, so I don't get a lot of CB work. Plus also my own time is quite limited, so I don't tend to take on that much CB work anymore either. So I've got 10 of those crystals and one of these. So I've got a bit of stock, which is great. The source I used to use to getting crystals made, they don't do it anymore. I used to get like 10 at a time or five at a time, something like that. And um, they don't actually do small batches anymore. They just they said it's uneconomic and so they decided to stop doing it. They are willing to accept an order, but it'll cost a lot more. So yeah. Anyway, that's the nature of things, isn't it? So yeah, crystals. Yeah. Stock. Thanks for Patreon supporters. Always appreciate those people. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, check out the links down below or at the end of the video. It's also links at the end in the end screens. And make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff too. You know, if you want to watch these videos your first time here, make sure you do that so you don't miss out on future ones. Obviously this is just a mailbag, I do repairs and stuff as well. People which know my channel have been around for a while, they they probably hear sick of hearing this, but yeah, it's not everyone's heard it yet. This is an RF amplifier. I purchased a few different ones. I've got a couple sitting over here. So this is the first one which arrived, 2.5 watt. This second one which arrived, which is a 4 watt, which I think is, looks really nice. And now we've got this other one. I don't know what that's right for. I think it's 2.5 watts as well or something, actually. Does it sound here? No. Nah. This is DH and RF wideband amp. Read it for yourself. Oh, I don't know what this does. Anyway, it's just a small wideband amplifier. I think there's like 1 gigahertz as well. The other two amplifiers are also 1 gigahertz. This one's got some heat sinking on it. It's probably slightly better than the first one I got. Got a loop on there, it's interesting. A test loop. Curious. So we've got a 78L09 in the middle there. Something which has been scratched off and something else has been scratched off. Helpful. But they don't look particularly powerful. That'd be the input, that'd be the output, because you've got a matching circuit just here, which is usually on the output side. Yeah, anyway. Matching slash filter whatever you want to call it. I will probably play around with these at some point along with the other two I've got and do a comparison and check them out and see how they actually go, see how they perform. I needed these for doing um, some calibration work on my Marconi 2955 because I couldn't calibrate the RF power meter because I need to do a wide band high power input in order to do the calibration and I didn't actually have anything to produce enough power. Sure I can do wide band but nothing with sufficient power to be able to do the calibration of the RF power meter on it. So. I kind of went a bit overboard and bought more than I needed because that never happens, right? Ah! <laughs> okay, that wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> I 
Okay, so I bought a bunch of Pomona leads. <laughs> and yeah, okay, yes, they are. <sighs> They're a bit smaller than I was expecting. <laughs> oh, wow. It does say Pomona on it too. These aren't four millimeter banana jacks. That's not what I was expecting. Wow. Um. <laughs> so for size comparison, I was expecting something a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's not quite the same. I think it's going to be a bit of a sloppy fit somehow. <sighs> what are these used for? Seriously. So if I had read the description slightly more closely, it would have said, well I would have noticed it read, mini banana, not banana. Now, <laughs> I didn't realise there was a mini banana jack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's have a look. Let's see what we actually get. Zero that. So if I measure the base there, 2.1 mil. Measure the tip, about 2.1 mil as well. Obviously, the outer part is a bit bigger because it's sprung. That's 2.7. Let's measure the back, the actual ball, and that's about 2.5 to 2.6 mil. Probably 2.6 is a bit hard to measure, but this is not exactly the right thing for doing this particular job. But it's uh, it's just in there far enough to get it. I think it's about 2.5, 2.6. Try different one case it's different depth. 2.6. So apparently 2.6 mils is standard for a mini banana jack. I didn't know there was one. What am I gonna do with these now? I spent 60 bucks on these things. Yeah. Right, okay. EPROMs, not the best packaging, but as long as they work, I really don't mind that much. TMS 2532JL 45s. Bunch of these. So I've got these for the Datrons. I've got more coming too. I, think I bought two different lots. This is the first lot, the second lot hasn't arrived yet either. They're being a bit slow with the postage these days. Yeah, they've got a bit backlogged apparently and they're still taking a while to catch up and it's been like three months somewhere, mail, maybe before. Even though it's been in the country for two months. It's ridiculous. Right, so yeah, I've got these for the Datron so that when it's time to... Well, actually I might even do it today, thinking about it. The one of the Datrons I've already, I think, basically repaired. It's I've done a calibration on it, it seems to be working. Not sure about drift on a couple of ranges, but it seems to basically be working. So what I was going to do, I was going to program EPROMs with the 7.5 digit firmware and see if it will work. Just, you know, why not? Let's try it. Uh, I've already got the backups of the original firmware. That's all done, but the issue I've got with my Dash 1, Dash 1 booth, look at the video, I'll probably link it up there or maybe in the description or something. The 1062, the GPIB is not working. It's just incompatible because it's had ball swaps done in that unit. And so you can't plug the GPIB in because it just stops it from booting up. It's not the right one. So I need to program that EEPROM with the right one, but I don't know erase the original EEPROM. So I've bought some more. I'm just going to do a full write of the whole unit with the 7.5 digit firmware. There's only four EEPROMs for that, so I've got one spare. And see if it works. I mean, if it works at 7.5 digits, then yay. Whether it's got the same kind of stability and stuff as a proper 7.5 digit Datron, I doubt it. There's probably some hardware differences, but it still be interesting if we can do it. Here we go to this thing. I should probably look at that before I push the button to start recording. Ah, oh, sod it. I only got so much patience. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Small things annoy me. Small things annoy me. Like this. The kit makes sound good for so much. Right, a whole bunch of connectors, which I'm now not using. Uh, well, probably not using. 
Is that the same spacing? No, it's not. So I bought a different cancers. I bought these ones and I bought some straight ones. I bought these ages ago, like three months, <laughs> maybe maybe more. Yeah, it's the same spacing as the original ones. So I bought straight ones, which I've already shown you on the mailbag, and I've got these ones. I bought them at the same time. You know, these only just arrived. I wasn't quite sure what kind of cancers I was going to use on these boards when I went to go design them. Well, as you can see, I've now done the boards, and you've probably seen the review video by, these, by now. I did a PCB way review and little project building these things and I explained a bit about the connector problem I had then. I basically made a mistake because that never happens. Um, anyway, so I've got some right angle connectors now in case I ever need them. That was pointless. It's a good job they're cheap. Right, here we go. The box inside a bag, at least it's well protected. Come on. Oh, God. I think I need to sharpen my round knife. Let's give me a blunt. Right, parts. Now, I was hoping to actually do a sponsorship about these parts, but the company was a bit uh, slow, and I needed the parts. So, I'm not going to say where I got them from. It's going to be a mystery. Who knows, I may still do a sponsorship with them. I may provide me some more parts. But uh, I wanted these parts and I'm late and they're being a bit slow. You know, I gave it two weeks and I thought, no, oh, no, I need the parts. So they actually approached me. And yeah, then, anyway, if you want a sponsorship with me, then follow through with it. Don't mess with me around. No one's got time for that. No, I'm not going to make unreasonable requests. If you want to do a sponsorship with me, I'm not going to be unreasonable about what I request for it, you know. Anyway. So, parts. So you've got UA741HC. These are all parts I got for the dash, I'm thinking I might need them. And as I didn't have stock, I thought I'd get some, because if I don't need them now, I might need them in the future, because I think I'm going to keep one of those Datrons and sell one. I'll keep one and sell one. So these are the devices here. There you go, UA741HC. It's like Fujitsu. And we've got some LF411, which is basically the same package style. You'll probably see it through there. Like right, these op amps. Uh, UA79MGU1C. So these are voltage regulators using the Datrons. That's the negative voltage regulator. There's two of them in there. Got the UA78, which is the positive voltage regulator. Should be two of those in there as well. And I actually need one of these because one of these are blown on the one of the Datrons. The LS101, the regulator is gone. Was it 79 or 78? I can't remember. One of them's blown anyway, I have to double check it now. I've got a pair of each, so I've got one for now to repair the one I need. I know is definitely gone, and one for spare in case I ever need it. Um, and I should probably got more, but they're expensive. Uh, LM212H, I think there's op amps as well. Or metal can, or old style metal can stuff. These are obsolete parts, they're hard to get. There's very few places you can get them from. And it's a shame because I was really looking forward to doing a sponsorship with this company because I've used them before myself, lots of times. I think I've mentioned them from time to time, not often. It's a bit of a shame because you know I would love to do a sponsorship with this and actually had them provide the parts for me to fix the Datrons. Anyway, it didn't work out that way. Anyway, MC14076B, I've got these because I think I might need them. And the MC14016BCP, which you can't really see on there. Some of those as well. There's also all Datron parts. Right, so it's got a few. I don't know if I actually need any of these. Well, I know I need the voltage regulators. I know I need that. But the rest of it, I don't know about yet. If you want more information about these, I suppose I could. You know, you can look it up yourself. It's on Google. Just look them up. <laughs> op amps. Um, yeah, op amps basically voltage regulators and some digital logic. It's me being cautious, but. I needed a couple of these parts, and I thought, well, while I'm here, might as well get some of these other obsolete parts, whether I need them or not, right now. Because in the future, I probably will need them for something. Even if it's not this project, it might be something else. Yes. I really wish I could have done a sponsorship, though. It's a shame. So if anyone's interested in doing sponsorship videos with me, and you know, providing services or something like that for me, I'm always interested in having a listen and consider it. I might say no, I might ignore you, even if it's a really dumb request. I do get those too. If you're a company you're interested in sponsorships, then get in touch because I'm available to do stuff.
and in this case I would have been I would have loved to have done a one with this company because that would have been perfect would have worked out really nicely but anyway it may still come yet so thumbs up the video if you liked it uh, subscribe and click the bell icon if you've not been here before and uh, check out my other videos I've got loads and loads of them look at the links at the end of the video as well because I've got YouTube suggests some other ones also the Patreon link too if you're interested in becoming a supporter of the channel happened to me to buy more stuff and I could have bought more stuff if I had more Patreons I could have bought more buy more no no that's no. Kiss later.